She's looking for Mecca's killer. But we held that down. Nobody said. Ah, we need to take this Noma out. It's not gonna happen based on what I saw. I want it out. And we still get here. Y'all figure this out. Mo! So there were a set of three exclusive clips released surrounding the Tohadas for Power Book 2 Go Season 3, Episode 1, and where it seems like Monet really is struggling to come to terms with Zeke's death, and where it seems like she's taking it out on everybody around her. So let's just give this some more background and context. At the beginning of Season 2, it was clear that where Monet's mindset was, she wanted out of the game after the trouble with Rico, and in one of these exclusive clips, she reaffirmed the same. She wanted to pull her family out of the game and into the business which would have kept them safe. But this was a business which Monet wanted a way out of the game for, not Diana's or Drew's. The plan was to have Zeke enter the draft and where he made it to the NBA. They would then follow Zeke wherever he went. Monet was going to be the manager, Diana was to ward off any females looking for a paycheck, and Drew would handle the media. Now what this plan didn't include was Lorenzo or Kane. But that completely changed when Lorenzo was released from prison, which meant Monet had to have no choice but to team up with Kane behind his back. But now that Zeke is dead, we're going to see Monet in an extremely vulnerable position. So far we've only seen Monet with this tough exterior, where she's been partially in control and where she's been able to have some control over the chessboard. But the distraction from Mecca and the lies that unfolded at the dinner table really did turn her world upside down. So for the first time in Ghost, we're going to see Monet in a really vulnerable state. She knows she doesn't have anybody she can trust, and she's had enough of this life. A life which she knows only ends up in death or jail. A life which she knows that destroyed Tasha St. Patrick's family. But I'm gonna come back around to this scene towards the end. You just need to fucking chill and cut me some I'll slack. I'll cut you some fucking slack when I put a bullet in whoever took Zeke away from me. Now, based on some of the exclusive teasers and scenes we've seen so far, we know the only person Monet can trust is Tariq St. Patrick, and that's because he was with her when Zeke was killed. Everybody else in her eyes very well may be a suspect, but at the beginning, it does seem like she's going to lean on Lorenzo and task him in finding out who is behind his death. And Lorenzo says he's doing what he can, but she needs to cut him some slack. But Monet is not interested in cutting anybody any slack. She wants answers, she wants justice, revenge, and she's not going to rest until she puts a bullet in the man who put a bullet in Zeke. Ironically, the man behind the trigger is standing right in front of her. So what is Lorenzo's next move? Because he knows Monet wants blood. Now, the only way I can see Lorenzo being cut some slack is if he finds someone to take the fall. And we will be seeing Monet taking a shot at someone in the bar. But there's also this scene where Monet is furious at Lorenzo and where she asks him to leave New York. But I don't think this necessarily has anything to do with Zeke. This is where Lorenzo probably did something stupid, because we all know he makes impulsive decisions based on emotion, and that's probably why he wanted Drew to take over the TARD organization. He knows Kane is too hot-headed, very similar to himself, and the position that best suits him is the streets where they fear him. But this is something I'm going to come back around to in just a moment, because I do think we've got a hint at what Lorenzo might do. Now, when Monet does find out it was Lorenzo, when and if she does, all hell will break loose, not just between them, but the kids will have to make a choice. Do they side with Lorenzo or do they side with Monet? Which is why I think we could start to see alliances form, something we already saw a hint of in season two. Why is she acting like this is all my fault? Papi, all I did was tell the truth. She's Zeke's mother. She's the one who's lied about it all these years, not me. That's what pushed him away. I know. Now, as we talk about alliances forming and where kids may have a choice to make, this was a second exclusive clip. One where Monet shuts down Diana, where Diana only seems like she wants to help. But I think from Monet's perspective, she's helped enough already. Diana was the one who exposed the lies and how Zeke was Monet's. So naturally, I think it's normal to assume Monet will throw some of the blame in Diana's direction. Because Monet will be thinking, if she hadn't leaked the secret, then Zeke may still would have been with them today. But who's really to blame? Lorenzo for making an impulsive decision, Diana leak for leaking the truth. Or is Diana right? Monet was Zeke's mother. She was the one who lied about it for all these years. Now I do have to say, although we can look at this from different perspectives and play the blame game, Diana isn't wrong. Ultimately, it does come down to Monet who kept the secret for 22 years. She's the one who started off this marriage with a lie. And as I once mentioned, relationships which are built on lies and betrayal lead to a vicious cycle that can be often difficult to escape. And those relationships that are built on lies are just destined to fail. So ultimately, although we can make a case for others beh being behind Zeke's death, Monet does need to take a hard look in the mirror, but that's not how Monet sees it. You definitely get the sense she blames Diana. So let me know your thoughts and perspectives on who's to blame, because I do know how this divides a few opinions in the comment sections. But play nice, because sometimes the debates do get a little heated. Now, one thing these clips don't show is that Davis McLean will enter either before or after this scene. This was one of the exclusive images that was released prior to the trailer, 
and one uses Davis, half for Monet. And how does this impact Lorenzo's next move? Because Davis will be helping Monet try and uncover the truth, which will definitely conflict with Lorenzo's next move. So expect to see Davis enter the Tejada household to give some news or an update. She's looking for Mecca's killer. But we held that down. Nobody says shit. Ah, we need to take this Noma out. It's not gonna happen based on what I saw. Pops, listen, okay? I negotiated for us to get enough product to take over the entire fucking city. Now, one thing Monet and the Tahadas will find it difficult to do is escape the game and the wrath of Noma. I ain't gonna jump just because you say jump. So it seems like they're gonna waste no time in introducing Noma and where Kane seems to have struck a deal where they'll be getting enough product to take over the entire city, but she's looking for Mecca's killer. Now this is where I think it's worth circling back to Lorenzo's impulsive decision making, where he doesn't exactly think things through. He wants to take out Noma without even knowing who or how powerful she is, but Kane makes it known there is no way they can touch someone like Noma based on what he's seen. But I wouldn't be surprised if Lorenzo goes and does something stupid, because we did see him taking a beating in the streets, and where it seems like she's put him back in line. So based on previous events, I think we can make a good case. Lorenzo may fuck shit up, which may be why Monet tells him he needs to leave New York. But I think this is Lorenzo's death written all over it, and why in my death predictions I predicted Noma to be the one to kill Lorenzo, to make an example out of him. But Noma is only part of the problem. Kane struck an agreement to get enough product to take over the city, and that is a hell of a lot of product for a family I once said was small fish. Course Correct is dead, and so are the GTG, and it's no secret they don't have anywhere near the infrastructure, soldiers on the streets, or a network to move that much weight. But not only that, Lorenzo's still furious about Kane's betrayal from season 2, and how he betrayed the family with the powdered sugar move. He said there's no way he's gonna make the same mistake twice, and he's not gonna jump just because Kane says jump. Now one way Lorenzo will definitely jump when Kane asks him to do so, is if he finds out the truth behind Zeke's death, and that's how he can get leverage over Lorenzo. So the dynamics between Lorenzo and Kane is definitely one to watch, because where we saw Drew besides him in season 2, I think it very well could be Kane. But Drew questions who are they going to be working with, and I think we all have an idea of who and how they could be moving some of their product. Tariq St. Patrick and Brayden in Wall Street, and potentially Diana and Effie at Stansfield. Now whether they recruit other crews in the streets is yet to be seen, but those are the most logical answers based on the trailers and teasers so far. Now, the other element that came out of this sit-down between the family is how Monet reiterated the fact she wants out of the game, and she left them to sort this shit out between them, because she wants no part of it. She's definitely done with the game, and she's got enough to worry about as it is, which of course, is Zeke's death. But no doubt, she's gonna be pulled back in deeper than before, because if they don't do as Nomar says, she will kill them, according to Kane. So they need to find a way of this to work. Now why Tariq and Effie are having a sit down with Nomar is yet to be seen, because based on this conversation it does seem like Kane was the one who found Nomar, so I wonder how this will go down with Kane, because we all know the rivalry with Tariq St. Patrick. But with that being said, that's a breakdown of the three exclusive clips which gives us a sense of how Monet's coping, or should I say, how she isn't. Lorenzo knows he needs to do something, and as I mentioned before, the only way I see him taking the heat off himself is to find a fall guy. And there's also the new partnership with Nomar. Will Lorenzo make yet another mistake that could lead him to ending up 6 feet deep? Drop all your thoughts down below on the latest teasers on Monet and the Tahadas. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.